Hello everyone, welcome to part 2 of the Avram Retrospective. Right now I'm playing R-Type for the original Game Boy Monochrome. And uh, part 1 dealt with Kung Fu, and part 0 dealt with a prelude to this entire series complete with a dash of drumming. But I'm going to start out uh, with R-Type per normal. And this is one of my absolute favorite games on the original Game Boy, along with Gargoyle's Quest. And we have our amazing music and gameplay going on here, but it seems to be missing just a little bit of something here. We're going to fix that in a moment. I'm going to pause the game. And I'm going to go into the core options for Gambetta, which is the great Game Boy and Game Boy Color Core. I'm going to go to the quick menu, options. Go to where it says Game Boy Colorization. Turn it to auto. Go to internal palette and have it set to Game Boy DMG, which is uh, essentially the original palette of the monochrome Game Boy. Just check it out for yourself. I'm going to resume. Now, it looks like I'm playing it on the original Game Boy. Nice green uh, DMG palette here. But I lost a life in the process. Second time's the almost charm here. But what if I want to go the uh, Super Game Boy route? Yes, we could actually do that too with my uh, more recent updates. Very, very cool stuff here. And I'm loving uh, the ability to play it with more of a uh, appearance to the original Game Boy. So I'm going to pause it again and go into the options. And I'm going to make it go to a Super Game Boy palette. Internal palette. We have multiple palettes we can go through uh, via the different systems here. But there are a good 20 plus Super Game Boy palettes there. We'll just pick a random one. We'll do a uh, 2G. Go back to resume. Okay, let's try another one. I'll try one of the earlier ones here. We'll go to uh, 1B. That's a little bit cooler. Now what if I want to add a random Super Game Boy border as well? I'll go back into the quick menu. I'll go to on-screen overlay. And I do have the uh, recent uh, Retromark Gambetta Borders uh, HMOD installed. Overlay preset. I'm going to go to the uh, Super Game Boy 16x9 here. I'll pick a random letter. We'll go to O. And uh, you want to pick one of the CFG files. I'll pick uh, Obelisk. Why not? And uh, you also have to make sure you have display overlay set to on. Resume. There we go. Look at that awesomeness. Very, very nice to be able to switch between 800 plus borders on the various Game Boy and Game Boy Color games. Definitely has a nice element of awesomeness here. And if I want to revert it back to normal, I can easily go back into what I just did. On screen overlay. And uh, simply disable this. But I can also go to overlay preset. And then change it back to the uh, default CFG. Just like that. And then I can go into video settings. And right now, with the HMOD installed, it is set to aspect ratio, uh, ratio custom. I can just go to 4-3. Just like that if I want to. And then, of course, I can turn off the uh, colorization. And I'm back to square one, just like that. So you have a multitude of options with uh, R-Type, one of the best Iron games in all of existence there. But I'm going to move uh, on to more Iron awesomeness. They actually delved into multiple genres, not just shmups. I mean, contrary to popular belief, even though they are most well known for their shmup games, they have done many, many more genres, and I'm going to do a few of these today. We're going to get into uh, one of the earliest cool football games that they did, which was also on the original Nintendo Entertainment System. We're talking about none other than 10-yard fight. Yes, Irem is 110% behind this game. It's probably the first best example of a great football game in the arcade. And of course, uh, my favorite football uh, classic retro series is uh, Tecmo Super Bowl. And of course, the original NES Classic removed the licenses and had no official players and such. But uh, we fixed that really, really quick with Hashi. <laughs> but I'm going to start this game out here. Feels like I'm starting out buying a commando with this little running uh, marine drumming thing here. Come on, I can do this, I can do this. Bam! Now one thing I'd like to point out here is, um, 
if you go into the, with the cheat age mod installed, you can go to the cheats. And here I can uh, enable with disable cheats. Infinity time, always first down. But the other thing you can actually do is go to uh, dip switches. And I'm going to enable invulnerability. And remember, if you're running with MAME 2003 Extreme, once you turn these dip switches on, they're going to stay on until you turn them back off. So I'm going to go back right now. Resume game. And there we go. Look at this, I'm completely invulnerable. Screw you guys, I'm going home. Bonos baseball, bonos football. How cool is this? Just don't do this when you're playing against a friend because they will not appreciate this whatsoever. But let's score a touchdown and we'll move on to some other games. I mean, Iron actually did a great job with their sports games and uh, I'm very impressed with this early arcade effort because uh, other football games that preceded this were nowhere near as class as this game. And of course, uh, Tecmo Super Bowl is one of the first games to ever have a three-point conversion, if you remember. Very, very cool stuff. And again, I'm going to go back in there and disable that uh, dip switch. Because if I come back in the game, it's going to still be on. Okay? And let's see what else we have to go with here. And of course, they dabbled into fighting games as well. I mean, we have our Mortal Kombat, our Street Fighter, our Killer Instinct. All very uh, well-known genres. King of Fighters, Art of Fighting, and of course, the Samurai Showdown. And Fatal Fury, all of which are uh, Takashi Nishiyama, who I covered in the last video, are responsible for, in, in all essence, and in, intents and purposes aside. But uh, right now, there's a game that I ever made, fighting game-wise, and it's actually called Superior Soldiers. Right between the cracks and the crevices again, a veritable gem of a fighting game. Uh, and of course, with the insane amount of competition out there, it is incredibly difficult to stand above the shoulders of the crowd. But in any case, recycle it, don't trash it. Much like the killer moniker of none other than Dainese with her winners don't use drugs. And of course, I'm going to be getting more into Taito and of course, Data East in future videos. But uh, right here, we have a bit of a Mega Man style cinema. And let's try uh, Superior Soldiers right here and now. Nice amalgamation combination of mini gameplay elements of games such as Street Fighter, Mortal Kombat, Eternal Champions, and uh, even Samurai Showdown as you can see right here with Busido, and even to a lesser degree, the archaic Justice League Task Force on the Sega Genesis, aka Mega Drive, which is actually a personal favorite of mine. I used to love playing a game for the Flash, Batman, Superman, Wonder Woman, and all that stuff. I mean, it's not quite as good as uh, Injustice, which we now play on Next Gen, but it was a fun game for its time. Now I'm loving the sound chip here. It sounds very, very much like uh, Sega Genesis quality music. Very d much digging it. Feels like I'm playing Jurassic Park or even X-Men on the Sega Genesis. Uh, let's see if I can pull off anything with Candy Ducks because I have my heaping helping of violence, mayhem, gore, and all that good stuff, and even some sexual overtones here. And it seems I'm taking on a very much like a Dowsum style character here. Oh, come on. Oh great, round two fight! I'm gonna try a couple other characters as well, and of course I'm getting a little bit of a troll there with uh, the thumbs up as he beats me. There we go, a little bit of uh, Christy Montero from the Tekken School of Fighting. I'm a big, big fan of uh, Tekken and Soul Calibur, Namco did them both justice. And of course, the best offense is a great defense. Uh, many people play games and just butt mash, but if you actually take the time to learn the discernible difference between offense and defense, you can do much, much better. And you'll never see anybody who uh, plays competitively butt mash. They always play defensively. And even in Tekken, you don't really see them doing 10 hit combos when it comes to uh, high end competition. Let's try Star Saber, who seems to be uh, a Captain Commando mother uh, style character here. <laughs> Okay, let's check this out. And another thing I like to do sometimes is if I'm playing an unfamiliar fighting game with characters that I don't even know, I try to do moves that some other games on, like right now. Let me try some Street Fighter style moves. And I have a Hadouken for the win here. Hadouken! And I did mention in my last video that Takashi Nishiyama is responsible for the creation of the Hadouken. He watched a space battleship Yamato from the 1970s and a ship pulled off that Hadouken style move 
but he went the downscale to something more of human proportions, and it was epic as far as the uh, influence on fighting games in general. We all need our uh, projectiles in the games, and it's still arguable about which game truly impacted the creation of the one-on-one -on -one fighting genre. Is it uh, Konami Jaya or Kung Fu, or could it be, of course, uh, this game, not this game, I'm talking about Street Fighter 1 by Capcom, and last but not least, uh, should we say Karate Champ by Data East. We'll do one more restart here. But them three games are definitely the uh, premier fighting games as far as the one-on-one -on -one fighting games are concerned. Karate Champ, and of course uh, Street Fighter 1, and Yair Kung Fu, all incredible games. Uh, we'll try the RoboCop style character. I might want to try the uh, Samurai Showdown style character too. Hopefully I'll be able to fight him right now in this battle. There we go, I have it. Uh, two for one here. Awesome stuff. I have a RoboCop style character with Meltdown. Really, really cool soundtrack. Really love that they have a Samurai Showdown style character. I did play uh, Samurai Showdown 2 in my last Neo Geo CD video, and I'm gonna have to play more of these. He has a little bit of a Legend of Cage uh, feel here. Another great title game. Oh, come on now. Never bring a Robocop to a sword fight. Stop trolling me, Bushido. I'm gonna take you down right here now. Before we move on to some more Irem awesomeness. Oh, come on. <laughs> Great. Where's Vega when you need him? Oh, yeah. Do a little. <laughs> okay. Round two fight. No pun intended. Let's take him down once and for all. And yes, arcades were great. I used to go to the arcades back in the 80s, 90s, and then go to the theater to see a movie afterwards. It was so fun to do back then. But of course, uh, there are many reasons why arcades died out. I'm going to cover a couple of those today. I mean, obviously, the advent of the World Wide Web uh, definitely had an impact on arcade games basically ending. Come on, I can do this. And of course, uh, being able to have... Uh, Quality experiences like in the arcade and home was another impact there, and they can't bump the controller there and mess me up. But let's move on to some other stuff. We're going to do a little bit of a, a comparison of home versions to the arcade versions prior to them becoming higher quality later on. I mean, Neo Geo was one of the first systems to truly have a perfect arcade to home experience, but uh, there are two other systems that did it pretty close to it as well. Uh, we're going to start out with uh, right now, just doing a home port that I wouldn't consider as good as some of the others, but this is just an example. We're going to play Image Fight for the original Nintendo. Great, great shmup. I mean, whenever you think Irem, you always think of stuff like R-Type or maybe In the Hunt, but uh, you don't always think of Image Fight, but it is a great, great game. We're going to play the Nintendo version here. And again, there are many times when you have arcade to home ports for the Nintendo Entertainment System, and they don't always turn out that great. I mean, there's always a huge difference between them. And you're going to see quite a bit of this when I get to my Data East and title videos. Okay, we're checking out this version right now. And then we're going to move on to uh, the TurboGrafx-16 port and see how that fares. And uh, I'd have to say that by the time... Uh, Irem is actually comfortable enough to do home uh, versions of their games. Other than uh, license them out to other companies, they did a tremendous feat and accomplishment by doing some of them on the TurboGrafx-16. I mean, games like Ninja Spirit were absolutely pretty spot on to the arcade versions. And even Image Fight is pretty awesome compared to the arcade version on TurboGrafx-16. Yeah, this isn't too bad. I mean, it's kind of a vanilla metaphorical affair here if you compare vanilla ice cream to, of course, Neapolitan. If vanilla is all you ever had, this being the Nintendo version of Image Fight, then you would be fine. But if you play the TurboGrafx-16 and or the arcade version, in, which is essentially the Neapolitan or the chocolate, whichever way you look at it, uh, you're going to want to play those. But it is fun to play all these and compare them. We're going to go to the PC Engine version right now and play Image Fight. And then we're going to finally do the arcade version. 
Then we're going to get into awesome custom OSTs for some of these games. Because on uh, Sega CD and TurboGrafx CD, and even MSU1, are, these are all ahead of their time. I mean, obviously Sega CD and TurboGrafx CD didn't do as well as they could have, but uh, it is what it is, and now many years later, we're all appreciating these the way they should have been appreciated many years ago. But we're checking out the arcade, uh, not the arcade version, the TurboGrafx CD version right now. And I paused it by accident there. And this is definitely a huge step up from the Nintendo version. Even has a pump and uh, kind of a Mega Man style feel to it with the music here. Of course, we can do the Turbo Fire mode activate here. You can do it two ways. You can do it through the core options, or I can just hold down the uh, attack button and push select and have Turbo Fire that way. That was one thing I really loved about the TurboGrafx-16 is the controllers had the turbo buttons right on them. Not bad at all. We're going to compare the arcade version next. And of course I can change my speed here. I'm going to go uh, exit back to the main user interface and we're going to try the arcade version. But yes, Image Fight is actually a spectacular game, and uh, I'm going to show you a very, very special version of Image Fight after I show you the arcade version here. And right now I'm running uh, roughly close to 200 games in my main user interface. I'm going to show you one special thing about this once I get to the end of this video. And again, I do a lot of stress testing as far as these are concerned. So uh, right now we're doing Image Fight Arcade. And I also need to reiterate, when I mentioned uh, Takashi Nishiyama about his uh, responsibility as far as the fighting games are to fight in Fatal Fury, King of Fighters, and of course Samurai Showdown. He was a co-creator of Art of Fighting and Fatal Fury, but he had a huge impact on some of the production and development of the other games as well. Okay, and I'm loving this music here. Incredible, incredible music. Definitely uh, draw me right into the game. And again, at the bottom, I can change between four different speeds. And I love the, the layers there. Give me a nice little 3D effect. This is a classic game. Definitely awesome. Okay, let's see how far I can make it. And of course, you can use dip switches and or cheats if you'd like to. And it is not at all an easy game. It's not a pushover game. It is definitely challenging. And we're going to move on to some amazing soundtracks next, but I'm going to show you kind of the comparison I just did with Image Fight, but I'm also going to do it with R-Type. I already showed you the Sega Master System one and the Game Boy one, uh, so right now I'm going to be showing you... Uh, we're going to move on to that right now. Let me uh, actually disable the Turbo Fire so I don't mess anything up. I'm going to move on to one more version of Image Fight. It's actually Image Fight 2, which is exclusive to the Turbo Graphics. CD. It is an incredible game with an even more fantastic soundtrack. So we're going to do that right now. Go through this uh, massive amount of games. So we're doing PCE CD and it's going to be the Image Fight 2 right here. Opera uh, Operation Deep Striker Image Fight 2 for the TurboGrafx CD. And I'm absolutely digging the soundtrack as you will hear right now. Again, I really wish these systems would have done better at the time because, I mean, even Dracula X, Rondo of Blood, which didn't even get a U.S. release until many years later, had one of the most impeccable produced soundtracks that I've ever heard for any video game whatsoever. But wait till you hear this soundtrack. It is awesome. Okay. And I haven't heard even a single game on TurboGrafx City with a bad soundtrack. Even Adam's Family has a great soundtrack. Great soundtrack. And we're going to move on to R-Type next. And there are so many R-Type games that I'm going to have to cover them through the course of a few videos. But let's see if I can do just a little bit better here and uh, not fail the second time. I want to at least get a little bit into this awesome music here. Let me focus a little bit more. Put it up on uh, full speed ahead. i got to get it on number four here. Third time's the charm. 
There we go. Give me a little bit more uh, control over my character here. I'm going to focus on trying to do a little bit better and hear more of the soundtrack. There's definitely a huge inset up here. Get as far as you can so you can hear this amazing soundtrack. It is not at all an easy game. Again, I said these image fight games are incredibly difficult. Not quite up to the spec of Ikaruga, but definitely hard nonetheless. Give me some power up there. Kind of between a rock and a hard place here. Oh, great. We're going to try this one more time. Why not? We'll do one more continue here, and hopefully I'll get a power up this time. Put on uh, full speed ahead four. And we get a power up this time, make it a little bit farther. Now, I love these type of games where you actually do feel a sense of accomplishment, making it just a little bit further each time, but it's even cooler having the soundtrack to boot. There we go, this is definitely much more helpful, having some power-ups to take these enemies out before they can counter-attack me. Much better. Speaking of which, I was thinking about the names of some of these uh, fighting games like Street Fighter, Mortal Kombat, Superior Soldiers, and so on. There's another game that's actually a perfect name for a fighting game that Iron also did, but it's not a fighting game. It's actually a shmup, and I'm going to show you this next. But yes, I'm doing a lot better now. And I'm definitely going to be coming back to this game as well. And hopefully many of you uh, get to see this game as well on your end, and of course if you have trouble running it, you can feel free to let me know, and I'll do my best to help you along. And I'm loving that little pseudo 3D effect with the enemies way, way down there in the background. See if I can even make it to a boss battle here. Kind of reminds me a little bit of Gradius where uh, you're all powered up, but once you die, you kind of start from scratch and you're screwed. Great epic soundtrack here. Love this boss battle music. And... <laughs> so she wrote. I'm going to be coming back to it, of course, but uh, let's play this other game which has a perfect title for a fighting game, but it's a shmup, nonetheless. We're going to check it out right now through the arcade games. We'll go the other way and see if we can get there a little bit faster. It is actually called Lethal Thunder. It is a shmup game. It has that really cool gimmick that I can actually exploit the hell out of using Clovercon right now. Just watch and see. Okay, let's get the show on the road. It kind of reminds me of uh, playing 3 d game heroes, which are fully powered up. Your sword takes up the entire screen. Just watch what I do. But yes, Lethal Thunder would be a very, very unique name for a fighting game. Right now, you notice at the left, I have a power meter that the more I push the attack button, it goes up and gives me more power. So what I'm going to do is actually hold down the attack button and use Clovercon to activate Turbo Fire with the select button. And check it out. Full power in no time. Talk about breaking the game, just like I did with Airwolf with the Turbo Fire. And final fight with the Turbo Fire. Well, Lethal Thunder, very, very inventive shmup, but I just broke it by exploiting the Turbo Fire mode activate. I have a feeling this game is going to be a bit of a pushover now with this Turbo Fire. But it's still a very, very fun game, and I'm going to be going through it. So I want to go through all these Hyrule games. But we're going to move on to uh, some other stuff right now, because, I mean, uh, one thing I love is that Irem actually did uh, really delve into many, many different category games, and uh, they actually did a very, very cool golf game as well. I mean, they have an epic golf game, one of the best golf games that I've ever played. Even if you don't like golf games, it's actually a fun game to play. Uh, we're going to try that right now for Neo Geo CD. It is uh, Neo Turf Masters. They've done a couple of sports games, but uh, this is one of their absolute best ones right here. It is not. And Neo Turf Masters is an incredible golf game, especially for those of you who are big golf fans. I mean, Irem has made several golf games, but this is definitely the pinnacle achievement of their golf game legacy. Let's check this awesomeness out right now. 
and I'm playing the Neo Geo CD version. There is also a Neo Geo version, but I'm really, really loving this uh, nice soundtrack for this uh, one right here. We're going to play the arcade uh, version. And look, no load time. And I'm not the best at golf or even tennis in real life because I tend to hit the ball a little bit too hard. And uh, shout out to you Australia mates out there. We're going to play the Australia course. Okay, here we go. Nice, easy to follow interface. We get to choose our power right off the bat. In real life, I hit 100 power every time, so I suck. Let's see if we can at least try to get close to par here. I'm more of a fan of uh, putt-putt because I'm better at putt-putt. I mean, real golf is definitely hard. Okay, should be able to putt here. Not bad. But definitely a very, very cool game. Worth checking out. And if you fail at this game, you get a little grimace on your face, uh, kind of showing that exactly. And I love that Irem delved into other category of games, such as fighting games, golf games, and so on. I love that they have a multitude, variety of games. Now we're going to move into some R-Type. We're going to start out with one of the uh, home versions right now. We're going to play R-Type uh, on the TurboGrafx-16. And there are two different ways you can play it on TurboGrafx-16, which I'm going to show you right now. We have the American version, which is pretty spot on to the arcade version. Right here, it is one single who card. You can play the whole game on one who card. But if you get the Japanese version, it's the exact same game, but it's separated into two parts. So it's a little bit of an exploit to help you get halfway through this incredibly difficult game by loading our type part two. You can get right to the smack dab in the middle of the game, which is really, really cool. And our type is most definitely not a walk in the park. It is actually one of the most agonizingly frustrating and difficult endeavors one can ever hope to encounter, shmup, or let alone game-wise. But it is uh, in the accolades of all-time favorite shmups for me at number one. And look at this amazing TurboGrafx-16 home port from the arcade version. There is no slowdown whatsoever. It is fast-paced, frenetic all the way. If I was going to pick a second favorite shmup of all time, it would probably be Life Force. AKA Salamander with this amazing combination of vertical and horizontal scrolling levels, as well as that tremendously cool soundtrack and of course the two player mode activate component. But yes, uh, most people don't make even 30 seconds into any of these stages. This is not an easy game series. I'm not going to be able to cover all the R type games in uh, just one video. I'm going to do it over a period of a few videos. And uh, many years ago when I got a uh, our type on my second master system, along with Space Harrier and Fantasy Zone, I was absolutely hooked at how amazing some of these arcade to home ports were. And on Nintendo, we didn't even have the luxury of having really good uh, Sega ports because even Shinobi and Afterburner and Space Harrier were absolutely terrible and atrocious on the Nintendo. But they were fantastic on the Sega Master System and whichever ones were on the TurboGrafx 16. But right now, we're going to be playing our type complete CD. And I have a lot of fun playing the various uh, arcade to home ports and comparing them among the systems. I mean, I actually went through all Donkey Kong games from Atari 2600 all the way up to uh, the arcade version. It's very fun seeing the difference. I mean, even the Atari 2600 versus the 5200 or even the 7800 version, there's a tremendous difference. And I, of course, had the ColecoVision version, uh, and ColecoVision is so amazing. I mean, you compare the ColecoVision versions of mini games, they are so much better than the Atari 26 counterparts. But right now we're playing a little bit of a semblance of a Streets of Rage, and of course Revenge of Shinobi Awesomeness, soundtrack wise, on our type complete CD for the TurboGrafx CD. And of course the Sega CD and TurboGrafx CD were way ahead of their time, and they should have done much better, but of course uh, Super Nintendo and Genesis were out at the time, and they kind of usurped the awesomeness and downplayed how cool these soundtracks were. But in uh, hindsight 2020, these things were just way, way ahead of their time. And I love the synthesizers right here that you would typically hear in Streets of Rage. Very, very cool stuff. 
Again, there is not even a hint of slowdown, which you would typically see, and even Gradius 3 on Super Nintendo. This is a beautiful, beautiful thing indeed. Remember, Turbo Graphics 16 uh, actually competed almost directly with the Sega Genesis, aka Mega Drive at the time. Let's get my favorite weapon. Should be right about there. I always love this weapon in the game. But I really, really hope those of you who have never played R-Type check it out because it is a beautiful thing indeed. I'm going to show you one of my other favorite R-Type games before we close up shop for today. And if you really, really like these amazing CD soundtracks and uh, drums and ninjas, you're really going to appreciate the next video I post. But uh, right now we're going to be playing Super Nintendo Super R-Type. And I played the hell out of this game, the bejesus out of it way back in the 1990s. And my other favorite game at the time was NHL Hockey for Sega Genesis, a.k.a. Mega Drive. I couldn't stop that, playing that game. I couldn't get enough of it. Okay, here we go. And we're going to play this in a very special way here. Let's start this out uh, the way it normally is. And for those of you who are not really familiar with this, I'm going to tell you something very, very interesting about Super R-Type. But let's hear this music for a moment. Very, very cool soundtrack, but... uh. How about we up the ante and do a CD soundtrack for this game like we did with uh, our type CD complete. We'll do that right now. We're going to play an MSU1 game. And uh, MSU1 is basically a CD soundtrack style equivalent, like similar to Sega CD or TurboGrafx CD, but you can play it with Super Nintendo games. And Bayou, who also worked on BSNES, is pretty much responsible for this. Uh, we're going to play one right now. It's our final game for this video. And then I'm going to show you how I shut down because I'm running nearly 200 games in my main user interface right now. Okay, MSU wants Super Art Type. Full CD soundtrack style. And what's really, really interesting about this game is the fact that uh, it is actually a combination of new levels as well as levels from Art Type to Arcade, complete with a new soundtrack. But here we have a double awesomeness of the CD soundtrack since we're playing the MSU1 version. And I did do an MSU1 tutorial a while back, but you can feel free to let me know if you have any difficulty doing this and I'll help you get your things going. But listen how incredible this soundtrack is with a CD flare. Nice jazz fusion pop here. And I'm gonna try to at least get to the mid-level boss before I close up shop. And the next few videos are gonna deal with all uh, the Metal Slug style games that uh, Irem is kind of behind, as well as ninjas, drums, and more awesome soundtracks. Now I love that you can do a double charge blast, that is awesome. We'll try to get to the mid-level boss here. And these MSG1 games are only going to be able to run on SNES 9X 2016 and Bright. You will not be able to run these on 2005, 2010, or 2002. Okay, we got this. And once your charge blast is completely full, it'll expire if you don't use it right away. So it's good to try to use it once you have it full heat charged up. And this slowdown we're seeing right now is actually uh, hardware related. You'd have to actually use an option such as uh, no sprite limit to be able to bypass that. So games like Gradius 3 on the real uh, Super Nintendo hardware, they had a ton of slowdown. Especially when they have many sprites on the screen. This is pretty typical for Nintendo Entertainment System as well. Particularly, uh, particularly with the bad Contra game. The third Contra game. We got this. Love the soundtrack here. Get a little bombarded by uh, air mines here. I got this. We gotta be close to closing up shop here. There we go. We'll play just a little bit of a stage uh, two here because the beginning of stage two is actually from the arcade version of our type two. You'll see it right here. 
Well, this is actually the very, very first stage of the arcade R Type 2. Right here. And uh, if you play R Type 2 arcade, this part right here is way, way faster. There's a little bit of slowdown here, but when you play the arcade version, there is absolutely zero slowdown. So it's not at all easy. I'll show you what I mean right now. I'm going to go to the arcade version of R-Type 2 for the final uh, part of this video. Now, I did do this in a previous video, but I'm going to do it real quick right now. Arcade R-Type 2. And the sprite limitations of the Super Nintendo hardware are not present here. This is a no host bar, no mercy whatsoever. I mean, it pulls no stops as far as difficulty is concerned. It is full speed ahead. And again, the very first stage of R-Type 2 Arcade is the second stage of Super R-Type on Super Nintendo. Let's see if I can even make it to the first end boss here. You do have your double charge blast, but it doesn't have the wide range that it does in Super R-Type. But it still has its uh, impact. And I'll make sure I cover each and every R-Type game that I possibly can throughout the course of the next several Iron videos. You definitely need to have speed in this game. Right here, uh, these enemies here that are coming out, you can actually exploit them in the Super Nintendo version by doing the Charge Blast because it slows them down tremendously. Here, it does not. I mean, they come out full speed ahead the entirety of the gameplay. You gotta always be on full alert when you play these games. Okay, some more power-ups and hopefully we can pull this first stage off. And the Turbo Graphics 16, as I said, was amazing for having no slowdown on many of these arcade ports. Like the R-Type one that I showed you. Uh, my second favorite weapon in the earlier R-Type game. We should be nearing the first boss here, I believe. There we go, that charge blast from Super R type there. Awesome. Much, much better. Hope you enjoyed the video, guys and gals. There'll be more to come.